G'day guys, how's it going? Welcome to Man Cave Tuesday. Hope you all had a ripple week. So, what do we got going on in this video? Of course, the bloody trailer continues. Check out what Nay's up to in the wood shop. Pete's got himself a new rolly stool for his garage. Do a quick update of the old fruit forest. I'll learn how to tie a new knot. And of course, BB news and shit. Right, hey, let's check out this trailer. <laughs> Right here guys, trailer revamp. It's been a bloody great day. When I was whinging the other day, that was actually yesterday. Today's Tuesday, the last Tuesday. So, I've been a bit selfish and I haven't been doing, videoing all the steps and all that kind of stuff. But what I did was I have lowered this bar. So that is down there, all welded on. I'm really happy with the way my bloody welding's been going. There's no grinding on that at all. That's just straight weld. That is rock solid. Um, so as you can see, that one's way up there. And then you come down and it's there. So that's going to be, um, the tire can sit on there, but only uh, partially sit on that. And the next bit that I'm just doing at the moment is uh, I've just tack welded that there now. I'm ready to take this tire off. This was um, one of those bolt-on ones that you get at the auto shops and it bolts um, onto that But of course, I don't have the room there. I ne never have So I've just I cut it at the particular angle me and Nay, I had Nay helping me to get all the angles right and just make it all fit and so far it's looking bloody good so That is gonna work out well and this tire is pretty well going to be level with the tin, so I'm really happy with that. It's still not uh, charcoal, but that's all right. <laughs> I'm getting to that. Um, so yeah, bloody good shit. Just thought I'd better show you the process a little bit. Rightio, yeah, guys. So the continuation of this, I've been having struggles with paint, paint colours. I'm gonna be going crazy. I think you guys will like it. Now, I've put in, um, welded those things in there. So that's, in that spot there is where the um, box is going to sit. I've got these bloody stuck back on and on there, obviously added a bit more. So hopefully that's going to help with the vibration. I just use liquid nails on it. Um, and I've got the spare wheel carrier. So I just modified this, it's now welded on there. I've strengthened up uh, this section here to stop this from bending in like that. So that's now bloody rock solid. Um, and it fits on there bloody perfectly. So there's shared weight between that and that. This here, more so for the, the lateral, I think you would call that. Um, and that but it's, it's actually sharing it all i wanted to go over the top because the last thing i want to happen is to have a spare wheel uh yeah something fail there spare wheel fall off and go and knock some kid kill some kid bloody on a on a street somewhere so i've yeah done the overkill on that um and i'm happy it's rock solid right so um, I'm going to paint. I've got, I'm going to use the epoxy satin bloody enamel black on the jerry can holders and then the rest of it, maybe black on here. The rest of it is my version of charcoal. You'll have to wait and see. Rightio, guys, as you all most probably know, spray painting is way better than hand painting. I'll give you a look at what I've done. So I said I was going to paint the um, oh, the jerry can holders, but I've painted all the drawbar and everything. So that's with the satin black. That'll uh, that'll bzz, bzz. apparently it'll. Bzz. What I mean by zzz is that it will flatten out to a satin, not a gloss. Um, so the the rest of the trailer is going to be a different color i just thought i'd do a bit of a tease so there you go right yeah guys so while i'm waiting while i'm having a bit of a rest before i kick off with this uh new tin this new color let's go and check out what nay's up to in the wood shop 
Hello. Hello. What you doing? Nothing. What are you doing? Oh, hello. Videoing you. <laughs> Why do you do that? I wanted to show him what you're doing. I'm not doing nothing. Curious George. So this is for Amelia, the granddaughter. She's turning three. Well, actually, she turned three yesterday. Exactly. And they've got a party to go to on the weekend. And they's got a, what did you get? It was a uh, chalkboard, painting board type thing. It's just a table easel. Oh. Yeah, so it's chalkboard on one side and just a board that you hang paper on to paint. Yep. On the other side. Some paint brushes and paint pots. And she, uh, Amelia loves Curious George. So Nay's got a bit of wood and somehow she's going to mount that to the easel and it's going to look like he's popping out over the easel. Is that right? Oh, something along those lines. You make it sound really impressive and it's <laughs> <laughs> Cool, there you go guys. That's what Nay's up to in the wood shop. See ya. See ya. Rightio guys. Whew. First coat is on this bloody trailer. I tell you what, painting with a bloody brush I feel like I'm a kindergarten kid and that's what I feel like I'm coming up with but it does start to it levels itself out now so this is what I like I love black can't go wrong with black can you so Mark thought he'd be uh, a bit bloody crazy Are you ready to see this <laughs> this is only the first coat I'm hoping that this it's growing on me a little bit um, until I get the box on because I've got some black strips there, which you read. Let's, let's, let's have a look. Ready? Boom. Holy shit. You're going, what the hell, Mark? Now, this is not white. It's not cream. It's supposed to be river sand. I don't know how that's going to pick up in the camera. Um, me and they... We both picked on the same colour, but this is way lighter than what the bloody uh, the swatch thing shows. This is the problem with um, you know seeing paint on little squares and stuff, and then next to all other ones. So something that looks darker next to something that's lighter is going to look darker, darker if you know what I mean. I don't know, but hopefully I can uh, pull this off. I'm not uh, calling it, I'm not throwing the towel in. I'll put a second coat of this on. My thought is maybe uh, once all the jerry cans and the wheels and everything's on, um, I don't know, I might be able to do an effect or something like a, like a bloody, um, I don't know, an army effect or I don't know, splatter paint, <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, there you go. Mark gone crazy. So obviously those two, that the big thing's going to be on there. It'll be painted the same bloody colour. Um, further away you get from it, the better it looks. Don't know. That's it. That's all I can do for now. I'll put a second coat on tomorrow, maybe. I don't know. I have to check what the dry, uh, the recoat time is. Righto. Righto, guys. Um, nay to the rescue because she has. Well, in actual fact, it was it's Matt. Matt to the rescue. Matt to the rescue. He, he gave Nay all these um, tint, paint tints, and there's uh, a whole heap there. So, you guys obviously saw the... So that's the colour of the trailer, which is that colour in there. And we just chucked in, what, black and yellow. yellow. And we've gotten that. So I much prefer that but i reckon we're gonna we're gonna try some other stuff so i just thought i'd let you see that we might be able to save it i mean it's not yeah, yeah. shut up no actually i won't bloody shut up i've got I've, <laughs> <laughs> so this is the swatch that we went for that is the um river sand that we picked that we picked do you think they're the same? Mm. I reckon what we've just tinted is even is much closer. 
But look at the difference. That is definitely different, isn't it? Yeah, I believe he's tinted it. Their mix is wrong. Yeah, and he double checked with me. He said, you know, it's definitely the river sand you want. And I went, yep. Mm. Mental. That's it. Right out. Now I'm going. Rightio guys, so it is the next morning. It's actually nearly bloody afternoon. I can't paint that trail with the new colour until tonight once the shadow goes past over. That gives it its 24 hours and I'm painting it in the shade, not in the sun, which is what Matt said because he said it goes off too quick. Now, I'll show you what the final colour that we've uh, <clears throat> come up with. That's it there. That's what it originally was. And that's our new color so boom i think that's uh, as best as we could get it to a color because the uh the problem with doing the tinting is you can, it can be a fine line you can go too far and then it's kind of like a bit bugger so now another problem this trailer is fighting me every which way i don't know i just when i get into these things i just go right i've just got to suffer this this is my low and after the low, I'm going to get my high back again. <laughs> right, so, you know I worked out how to, um, so I'm going to paint this. I don't want to paint it because as it is, where are you there, I've got the bloody shadow. Actually, if I go around this way, you'll be able to, then I'll get blown out. So this, I don't want to paint it because... There's no maintenance. There's no paint that's gonna chip. Things will hit this and it's just gonna be what it is. If I put paint on it, it's gonna chip at some stage. The rocks are gonna hit the front of it. I know that's gonna be a guarantee and I'm gonna have to touch it up from time to time. Um, but there's a real downfall to having um, something nice and shiny like that. And especially when I've got it, it's gonna be down low on the trailer and when I've had it out there in the sun, it just, it's like, it just glares at you. It's just absolute crazy. The other thing too is that it'll tie into the trailer a whole lot better if they're all the same color, if you know what I mean. So, now the problem that I ran into is that if I'm going to paint this, all this wonderful silicon that I did that sealed up and stopped the rain, the paint ain't gonna stick to it, so, I've got to get all that silicon off, paint it, then put the silicon back in. Obviously, in there is going to be silicon, but I'll have to I'll redo it again. So that's a bit of a pain, but anyway, I figured out how to get it off because it was really hard to get off. But the um, that thing's doing it, and as I've done it, <coughs> I'm going. Well, that's going to be pretty. Whoops, sorry. That's going to be really cool. Because that's the other thing, when you paint something nice and shiny like this, especially aluminium, paint doesn't like to stick to it because it's shiny and aluminium forms an oxidization, as we know, you know, when we're trying to polish up stuff. And that's why aluminium does not, or aluminium for the Americans watching, um, that's why it doesn't rust, is it forms that uh that oxidization which is i don't know they call it some oily thing it doesn't feel oily but apparently it is um so you have that oily residue which then the paint doesn't want to stick to so what you've got to do is you've got to uh, matt said go and get a um uh what do you call it uh scotch bright go all scotch bright over it do the etch primer then paint it but I'm just going, I don't have any of that stuff. I'd have to go to Bunnings and get some more stuff. But I'm looking at this uh, wire brush, and I think that's what I'm going to do. That's going to give it even more marks. And I don't mind the marks. If I don't want, I don't need shiny. And I'm, it's going to be painted flat. So I think that's going to work all right. And I'll make sure we just do that. So there you go. Keeping you in the loop. Guys, look, I'm nearly there. One small patch to go. Then I can start doing the etch primer.
Right, yeah, guys, so that's it. That is the etch primer done. It took one can exactly. I had two runs across the back um, and then it was out. So it, it done it perfectly. So there we go. So, hey, I mean, I can't do anything more that I know of. Um, that's going to make, you know, do the job. Do the job. Oh, am I getting runs? We are getting some bloody runs. Mark. Oh, yeah, got a few runs there. Well, I didn't think I was putting it on that heavy either. Oh, well. As I was saying, um, yeah, I don't think I can do anything better from what I've, I've overly roughed it with the wire stuff. I've put the edge primer on. Now I'm putting epoxy paint on it. Um, so yeah, anyway, there you go. Cool. Oh, and there's no going back now. Right, oh guys. We're just about to start doing the trailer. And we're looking at the trailer out there and the little test piece that we did and we're going, oh, maybe we should go a bit darker. So I thought I'd grab this out so you can have a look at doing the tinting. Obviously you can buy these uh, tinting stuff so you get all the major colours. Basically, you just squirt some in. So all we've done with the particular colour is uh, black and yellow. They're the only two tint colours that we're using. So the black is darking it up, and the yellow is giving it that more creamier look. So I think as we go darker, do you want to go further, Bob? Chuck some more in. Don't be scared. <laughs> difference to it but it's like that and then all of a sudden you go oh hang on a minute anyway we'll keep on keep on playing rightio guys I'm just going to quickly show you this uh, curious George thing now he's doing some more signs what's that one gonna be Moto Guzzi Moto Guzzi and a what was uh, that one Ducati. Ducati. And here is that uh, Curious George. Look at that. Oh, I love it. I reckon that's so cool. Amelia's going to love it. If not, we take it back. We keep it for ourselves. That's it. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a uh, chalkboard. And then on the other side, yeah, you, we've got... Nay's got... Bloody, she's gone and got all these bloody 
doodads yeah so it's got a clip you put your got all the paper and all the paints and paint pots to go with it all so uh yeah i think she'll be happy with that yeah and to be clear i didn't make it i only did the sign <laughs> yeah yeah no 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 she bought this all this thing um but yeah just made that and did a bit, of, bit of a modification and attached it to it you're very clever aren't you no not even <laughs> a little bit right eh? see ya Right yeah guys, been a few days, got lots and lots done. This thing is now painted, it has three coats on it. So that's the colour, it's going to be hard to pick it up I think on the camera. But it's uh, come up really really good. It really leaves a nice um, texture, because this is flat, flat paint. But I've done it with the roller so, I don't know if I can pick up. It's like a velvety type of um yeah nay really likes it uh inside is uh as you can see that i've lined it so all that stuff around there and the front is uh what do you call it uh, liquid nailed on but i've left the bottom is loose so i can lift that out if i want to you know if water gets in or something like that i can always uh pull that out to, uh, give it a bit, bit of a clean so that's done that's this thing's pretty much ready to go I got the old mounting stuff off the old tin cleaned them all up painted them bloody de-rusted it's not that these were rusty it was the rust off of the old container had contaminated all this so that's all cleaned up got a new set of um, mud flaps for the trailer and I just thought you guys might be interested so that stuff that I've used was just anti-fatigue floor mat and it comes in a big roll like that got it from super cheap that is the new uh, ramp so that's basically it I just got to strap it to hold it together there's no clamping system or anything that as you can see in that size there is half the weight of this one that I had um, and a lot smaller as well. So things are shooting along but then of course it's the trailer so there was another problem. Rightio, so there is the trailer in the new colour. I think I most probably like it a little bit darker but at least it doesn't have that stupid pink bloody look to it um, but yeah I think once all the gears on it, it's gonna look pretty good but I was thinking of actually um, I had that blinker wasn't working on this side and I thought it was the globe and I couldn't get the lenses off uh, these because the little um, screw was just yeah it was all anyway i managed to get them off i swapped the globes over because i couldn't tell that the globe was buggered no it's not the globe the globes are fine um but then i got nay to come out so i could bloody stand here i don't know there was some weird ass stupid one minute the blinker was going off and it was this was blinking and then all of a sudden in front of my eyes it would swap over to that one if I had the car, uh, the park lights on, the tail lights didn't, the tail lights didn't work. Put the full lights on, and the tail lights worked. And then, but then the next minute it would work. I don't know. It was whoosh, crazy. So we ended up getting out the um, test light because I'm thinking, well, there's got to be a problem somewhere. Anyway, as you can see down here. Uh, we started, well actually, funnily enough, there was, there was two issues. Well, that I first noticed, in here, one of the little prongs had gone back, but I think it was still working now that we found the real culprit. So anyway, I got the test light, you know, bloody thing, and it was working from there yep cool so then the double adapter thing that i've got here we checked from there and that was working then i'm going oh no so that means you know from here somewhere along in the bloody trailer um there was a problem found out that it was 
in this part here, so the part that leads from here into the trailer, there was, uh, the thing was, anyway, got contact cleaner, bleeding, squirting shitloads of that in there, and hey presto, it's now working. So now I've just got to, oh, in the meantime, I will stuff around, we'll bug it up some, some of the wheels, why, so I'm just redoing those clips. Then I can get, yeah, to get all that sorted. What else? There was going to be something else. What was I going to say? I don't know what I was going to say. Yeah, oh, no, that's what I thought. I was going to show you in behind there. The, um, the thing that had popped out, in the back there, it popped through, so I was able to push it back in and click it back into its little spot. So that's, that's sorted as well. Crazy, 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 but there you go. That's what's going on. Rightio, guys, just out on my morning walk. It's starting to bloody rain. Bloody hide in this tunnel for a minute. Um, yeah, it's crazy. We've had quite a bit of um, rain lately. So we're in the middle of summer. I'll just bloody pull up here. We're in the middle of summer. I'll turn this around. Hopefully you can, it's exposing all right. And yeah, everything's uh, starting to bloody green up again. You know, normally this time of year, everything's just, you know, brown. But, uh... but I must say, it is a welcome relief. This morning, just seeing the little, you know, the bits of bloody green and um, all the birds are chirping. Normally the friggin' birds are chirping always. Um, but it's that damp, because we've got a lot of rain overnight. It's that damp and the eucalyptus uh, smell. It's quite heavy and everything's kind of like a bit soft underfoot. You're not everything's crunch, 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 crunch type bullshit. Something a little bit bloody different, righto. Um, anyway, this was all about just crossing over to Pete. He's got himself a new rolly stool or something and uh, he's got a bit of footage for you, righto. G'day guys, how's it going? Well, tonight I'm going to do a little product review on this uh, portable working stool. My wife bought it from the MX store. It cost $69.95. Looks like we've got to do a little bit of uh, assembly work here. So let's get into it. Rightio, I've just hit this uh, with the Stanley knife. Let's see what's in the box. What have we got? One seat, like some framework, a base, empty box, four wheels, and some nuts and bolts. Okay, so there's the product there. Doesn't come with any instructions. It says it can handle up to 150 kilos, but just looking at the picture, I think it's going to be pretty easy to work out what's going on. Yeah, there's the framework for it. I'm going to be using my Ballard's uh, uh, spanners there. Uh, I've got them over there. There's 8 mil, 10 mil, and 12 that I'll need. Uh, and these are the uh, various uh, nuts and bolts and washers that come in the pack, and I've arranged them uh, in the various sizes. And you've got the four wheels there, and there's the seat and the uh, the base there. So the seat itself, there's four holes here which uh, screws into yeah, those four holes there on the frame. I'll turn it over and grab one of these frames. You'll see they just sit in there and bolt straight in. So I'll uh, put the bolts in there and come back to you. Okay, got the framework on the seat, just using the smaller uh, screws that were there. I'm um, just looking down here. These are the smaller uh, nuts and screws. The eight eight millimeter they were. Um, just Phillips head on the other side. So that's done. Just looking at that. It'll just sit in there. And looking at the picture, you can see the pointed end matches up with this front end there. And looking down here. You've got a larger hole and a smaller hole, so the larger hole, this is where the wheels will go through. And then the smaller hole will be for these screws here. So just showing you there, it's just upside down and you'll see where the, uh, the wheels go in. You can see it's got that hex there for that nut already on the wheel, so it'll just drop in there and locate in there and then just got to put the uh, nut this larger nut, 12 mil nut on the other side. Okay, I'll finish that off. So I've put all the four wheels on. Just flipped it over. I haven't put the uh, the nuts on yet. Flat washer. 
and the spring washer and then the nut. So I'll go around and do all four of those and then these screws here will go in there as well in that hole. Okay, I'll go and do the four bolts first and then we'll get back to these ones. Actually, just thought I'd show you tightening these up with my Ballard spanners here. Check it out. Gotta love it. Bit hard to do this with one hand though. Anyway, I'll continue on. Still loving these spanners. Look how you can angle them up. Have a look at that. How cool. Even if you get in tight spaces like that. doing this with one hand basically shows you there that um, the nuts have got to be on the top side and the screw head on the bottom that one in there that one in there sorry about the camera work guys where's this one Okay, we'll flip it over and uh, do the nuts up. I've just uh, hand tightened all the nuts up. Uh, where are we here as well? So just got to tighten them up. Okay, job done, guys. There it is, all screwed together. It's the Bike Service BS6100. Check it out. All right, let's plonk my bum on it and see how we go. Hey. Hey, 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 how's that? And we'll go over the, running over the carpet all right. Concrete's good. <laughs> all your tools. Oh, yeah. All happening. Spanner. Uh, 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 uh. Fantastic. All righty, back to the man cave. I'm sorry, Pete, but when you put moves like that out and you send me a video of it, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> right. I just want to quickly run through just some of the uh, the fruit forest of the bits and pieces that we've got growing. I will let you know that the nectarine out the front got nothing. We've got heaps, nothing out of it because of fruit fly. Yet the plums out here didn't get any fruit fly. It was only that tree out there. Hey, look at that. Lemons. Lemons everywhere. So that's Lenny, the one that we nearly killed. That's a uh, Mayan Mayan lemon, the Eureka one. So these Eureka ones seem to be more of a overly shaped, whereas the Mayan is more round. If you see that, and I think one of them is. I think that one might be the sweeter one. Look, we got blueberries. Oh my God, bloody crazy. And we have, and I did, oh, I've lost another one. Oh, oh. It's my second one that I've lost. That is what you call a micro <laughs> grapefruit. So that's a grapefruit. Uh, oh, yeah, I still got one up there. You see that? So hopefully that one stays on. Not sure why we've had two drop off, but that's just what plants do. So in here, the passion fruit. As you can see, there are passion fruits just everywhere on this thing. And I think we've got, I've had one drop off. And we've got that one there. It's only small, but it's starting to ripen. Now, when it, co when it comes to the passion fruits, um, once they drop off the vine, that's it. They will not ripen any more than what they are. Let's go and have a look at me oranges. Oh, hang on. Uh, what do we got? Where is it? There it is. Strawberry, me two strawberry plants. So that one there and this one here. Just haven't done very good this year. So I've got a lot that went, did that, where they start to come and then they just die off. So I might need to do something with those. Obviously, this has got heaps of mandarins all over it. That's doing really well, including the mandarin out the front. May's not here because she's going to go do the post office run. Um, so look at this. These are massive. Well, massive compared to what I have. So this is the orange. So there's heaps of uh, oranges 
all on here. So that's, uh, yeah, very excited to see these things get bigger and go orange. The old kumquat, it's still bloody gone. Actually, let's just rip that one off. Whoop. Oh, grab him. So remember, kumquat, they're sweet on the outside, but sour on the inside. And you can eat the whole thing. Not bad when you mix the two together. Well, there you go, that's what's going on. Righto guys, I just thought I've got <clears throat> the two grapefruits and the passion fruit. Let's cut them open. Righto, first one is, oh, the dog's sneezing. Oh yeah, that's not much bloody chop, is it? So that's the grapefruit. And the passion fruit. Oh, there's a little bit of bloody something in there. the grapefruit. This, <laughs> it's as hard as hell. Just tastes citrusy. So that's a flop. Passion fruit, bugger all in there, but that tastes good. That tastes real good. Just hope they get bloody big. There's a lot more out there that are way bigger than this little thing. That's good to know, even if it comes off small, as long as it's you know, changed colour from the green, that's still perfectly fine. Brilliant. Right, I get out of here. Right, and has just come back from uh, the post office, and look, this is her new desk apparently. <laughs> Stop it, I'm trying to work. Right, eh? There's that uh, Moto Guzzi all done. And the Ducati. Oh, focus. Yeah, cool as. Rightio, guys, I have learnt myself finally after all these years a particular knot. The one knot that I have always used, I used to work for uh, Shell at the depot and used to work in the office and I also did oil delivery. So I'd take to the service station the big boxes of you know, four litres, one litres, whatever. I also took Jet A1 in 44 gallon drums to the airport to fill up a helicopter. Um, and then the big <clears throat> 60 litres, 40 litre drums um, on the back of the ute <clears throat> to clients, you know, workshops and all that kind of stuff. So when I first, uh, when I started working in the Bendigo, because I didn't start there, I started pumping bloody petrol um, of, of a night time. Anyway, got a transfer to the depot. A truck driver taught me how to do the truckies hitch. He also taught me how to do, now I know, the, clover, cl uh, the clovers hitch, but I never retained that. So I'd always just do basically a granny knot or whatever on the bar of the ute, go up and then do the, the trucky hitch. And I've done that all my life. The main time I ever use it is with the trailer, tying down loads of whatever I've got. Obviously, when I was working for Shell, I used it all the time, tie big barrels, all the bits and pieces. So I just really, that just, I can do it. Don't have to think about it, I'll just do it. And I don't know, just recently I was thinking, you know what, I really should, now that there's the whole magic toolbox, someone referred to YouTube as the magic toolbox, and I love that. That was in the KDM 690 video, and someone commented something about it's great having the magic toolbox. And I had to think for a minute, and then I went, YouTube is the magic toolbox, and it is. Um, so there's a bazillion, gazillion, not tying um, stuff, all the different things. Anyway, so I found this particular thing that John Smith, that was his real name, true to God, John Smith, most commonest name, <laughs> two names ever. Um, so I found that particular one. Anyway, so every day now I've got some paracord, I keep it in the man cave, and on the arm of the chair I just keep doing this clover's hitch. <clears throat> I've printed it now, I've got it, it's, I think it's firmly in my head now. Um, but that was the one knot that I didn't have in my knowledge bank to, to use with the truckies hitch. Now, I know with knots, there's lots of different ways and whatever. But anyway, I thought I would show you the clovers hitch. Um, and if you 
used trailers or whatever. Even, you know, you could, if you don't have straps, you could tie down your bikes or whatever. They, you can use them for lots of different reasons. Um, and then next week, I'll show you the, uh, the truckies hitch, or if you're impatient, just search for it online and you'll bloody see it. Righto. Righto, yeah, guys. So I'm just gonna use this power of bloody orange stuff. It's good to see. So there's your bit of rope that you need to tie to the, you know, your trailer or whatever. So just get this end here, get a little bit over, wrap it around your trailer pole, cross it over, come back around, and then you go, shit, Mark, you bug it up. Bloody hell. Okay, cool. Let's get a little bit more. So around the pole, over, back around, and then just tuck under that last one that you went over like that. And then start to cinch it. They say, you know, oh, you just not neaten it up like that. And now when you pull on that, like I would be able to pull this whole bloody thing, that is not coming undone. But there is a caveat to this. And, that, and this is why this is such a good knot is that when you lose your tension, this knot, just give it a wriggle like that, will come undone very, very easy. So how's that? So there is another thing that you can do. You can add a half hitch to it. So basically go around your pole, cross over under that first, oh now I need to get, hang on, I need to have a little bit more. Cross over, go under that first bit like that. Neaten her up, pull it tight and there you go. And then what you can do is just this last little bit, wrap this around and whack him underneath there like that. And then pull that, hey presto, and then it's a whole lot harder for this to come loose when you lose tension. So sometimes when you, you've, you've got something in the, you know, might bunch of bloody trees or something, branches, you tie your thing up, as you're driving along, things wriggle around. Same as on the back of a bloody motorbike, if you don't have a tight, your, rope can get loose so if it gets loose then that thing without that half hitch would then could undo if you know what i mean actually just for shits and giggles this is the type of rope that i use do you remember the nylon rope my god that nylon bloody stuff that was horrendous um you get all this you, everybody knows what this rope is you can get it everywhere so this is the common stuff that everybody has got it when it when you tie it down it, it bites in on it on itself let's just use this stuff on that. Right, yeah, so got me end, around it, cross over, back around, go under that first one. You could go under both if you wanted to, but this is the proper way apparently of how to do it. Neaten it up, and then once it gets to a point, that's it, it will not budge. Bloody ripper. But, give it a wiggle, so this one's a lot harder because it, it likes to, it's kind of like sticky to itself, but how's that? Easy undone. Right, um, so yeah, good idea. Grab, get yourself a bit of paracord, a bit of rope, whatever. Wherever you're sitting, every day do a particular knot. So that clover's hitch is really good for working on trailers. Next week I'll show you the truckies knot, trucker's knot, whatever the hell you want to call it. That is really good uh, on the trailer. I've used it my whole bloody life. Um, the other thing with it is, because it's quite a, it's a bit of a, when you do it, and because I've got it so down pat, I just go boom, 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 da -da 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 boom, boom, um, it looks impressive. So when and someone sees it, they go, oh, gee, wow, you know, it's kind of gives you a bit of a good feeling that they go, wow, oh, gee, that looked pretty fancy. <laughs> um, there was another, th oh, Matt and Brody, they're over here for, um, a roast and I was showing the boys this clove hitch that I'd learnt how to do, which is what you just saw. Um, anyway, Matt bloody grabs grabs the rope and he goes, oh, check this out. And he goes, da -da 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 -da. and I was like, oh yeah, that's cool. And then he goes, ka-ching. And I went, holy, it's like a trick knot. You must really know what I'm talking about, the guys that know knots and all that kind of stuff. So I'm learning that one so it's firmly in my head because I reckon it will be great for when out camping and stuff like that, a really good one to know how to do. Um, so next week we'll do the trucker's hitch. Week after that, we'll do the little trick knot. Um, who knows, we might do some other knots. I think 
you know, people normally find a few knots because there are just there's so many different bloody knots and it becomes a whole, I don't know, whatever. But you only need a couple of knots. Like I've only used that one knot. I've done a granny knot, obviously, and then done the truckies, but now the clove hitch. Whatever. Righto. Just roll it. Yeah, so I'm going to flip up and over. Yeah, so if you come around here. And if you go back, back that way, down, under, and over. And we have it on. Is that it? Is everybody letting go? Yeah. All right. Well, it's on there. That back tire is down so good. There you go, CT10, posty bike, on a CT10 posty bike. <laughs> Keep on riding, guys. Rightio, guys, time for BB News and shit. Now, first off, here's a new crew member. There he is, Tim White. Good on you, mate. Thanks heaps. Right, so now we've got, we're going to be doing another giveaway, and this is what we're giving away, a Camelback high vis was given to me um so what have i got i've got written down here this is for the crew members obviously uh i just had it up and i've now bloody lost it hang on right oh so um it's live on the crew site when i do the monthly update which i'll get done in the next couple of days i'll have a link to that or go to the crew site go to the freebies and giveaways like last time, you'll see it there. It says that the entries close on the 20th of February. The winner will be drawn like last time on the Wheel of Death. Uh, Man Cave Tuesday, Episode 6, which will be the 23rd of February. Right, eh? Cool. Right, eh? So now it's time to check out what the crew's been up to uh, on the forum in the out and about where they bloody give me some bits and pieces to whack in here. We've only got one uh, this week. This is Beza. Princetown Wild Camp, look at that. Uh, we headed out Saturday morning to a place called Princetown, Victoria, where we came across a butte place to camp with hills on one side. Oh, look at that. And the ocean on the other. <laughs> Bloody hell. Now, that's a cool picture. Uh, set up digs on the night before tucking into a bottle of Jimmy and some steaks. So what do you, looks like you got bloody, uh, what do you call it? A couple of swags there. Oh yeah, look out. Uh, it was a very rutty and sandy four wheel drive track to get in and out, so we got to play in some mud. <laughs> Bloody ripper. Good on you, Beza. Right, eh? So that's it for BB News. Right, eh? Back to the man cave. Well, there you go, guys. That's man cave Tuesday done and dusted for another week. Hope you all enjoyed it. Remember, Keep on riding, and if you ain't riding, keep on keeping on.